Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. And today I'm making a little departure from my usual makeup content because I am filming a hair video, uh, which is a little unfortunate actually because I do like how my makeup uh, turned out today. But uh, yeah, we're talking about hair and hair tools specifically. Uh, so this video is kind of tangentially related to, I guess, the latest hair tool to hit the market that everyone is talking about, and that is the Dyson Air Straight. Uh, I will say that I planned to make this video before they announced the release of the Air Straight, so I already had this in mind. Uh, but it does add an interesting kind of wrinkle to my video in that I don't have the Air Straight. I may purchase it eventually down the line. Uh, but the original concept for this video was about a different Dyson hair product and specifically the Dyson Air Wrap. So uh, this was up until the announcement of the Air Straight, kind of the, I guess, most popular Dyson hair product. Uh, but as we all know, it is very expensive. So this is a very kind of multi-purpose tool, uh, as you probably know, but uh, specifically, I'm going to be talking about the kind of uh, straightening function of it, ironically, again, because of the Air Straight. And the Air Straight, I think, does give a slightly different finish than this does. But uh, anyway, I'm going to be comparing this to the Amica, what are you called? Double Agent, I believe. Yeah, so this is the Double Agent 2-in-1 Blow Dryer and Straightening Brush. And this was a boost, I believe, in the summer FabFitFun box. Uh, I actually picked mine up at Sephora when it was half off during a kind of sale that they were running. So I ended up paying about $60 for this. It retails, I think, for $120. Uh, full price versus the $600 that this retails for full price. Now that Dyson does have a new shiny thing to uh, sell, uh, I think we are seeing more sales on the air wrap. But for a long, long time, uh, this was basically never on sale. So you had to fork out the 600 some uh, dollars. I actually got mine at Ulta when I opened an Ulta credit card and I got 20% off that way. Not suggesting that you do that, but that's how I did it. Uh, and I was also able to use, I think, about $250 in points. Uh, so that kind of softened the blow a little bit. And if I do end up purchasing the Air Straight at some point, uh, that is probably what I will do in the future. Uh, so, without totally giving the game away, uh, I already did my hair using those two tools. And I split my head in half and I did... Uh, one side with one tool and one side with the other. So you can let me know which side you think looks better, which side you think I used which tool on. Uh, I did record myself doing my hair, so I'll insert that footage as we go. But yeah, I thought it would just be fun to kind of give you an opportunity to figure it out um, before we go in. So um, while I'm giving you a few seconds to do that, I will mention that I do have naturally wavy hair. So it's not completely kind of curly, kinky up at the root. So uh, that gives me, I think, a little bit more flexibility in terms of the tools and techniques I'm able to use. Uh, today, as far as how I did my hair, so uh, I did wash it today. And then after I got out of the shower, I used both a diva towel, I think it's called. And then I put my hair up in a turby twist. And it was in the turby twist, I think for about two and a half hours before I actually did my hair. So the hair was still definitely damp. I hadn't let it down to kind of fully air dry, but I had, I think, thoroughly kind of towel dried it is what I'm getting at. Uh, and once I let my hair down, I did comb it out with a wet brush. This was a, I think, limited edition design that they released at some point. Uh, so I used that, and then I used I used all Amica products today. Uh, Dyson doesn't have any like hair styling products. Uh, it seems like kind of a missed opportunity, if I'm being honest. But you know they're kind of sticking to what they know, I guess. Uh, so for Amica, I used their uh, shampoo in the blue bottle. I think it is which was also something I got in a FabFitFun box. That was the Hydro Rush Intense Moisture Shampoo with Hyaluronic Acid. And then I used their, I think it was called Soul, Soul Food, yeah. Their Soul Food Hair Masks. So those were my in-shower uh, products. And then after I got out of the shower, the only other product I've used is the Amica The Wizard Silicone-Free Detangling Primer. And 
I'd used this a long, long time ago, but I think they've reformulated it. It says new and improved. Uh, primarily, I think, to make it silicone free, which is nice. Uh, and I think they might have changed the packaging a little bit as well. I used all of those products on both sides of my hair. Uh, I figured why not just stick with Alamika. Like I said, Dyson doesn't have any styling products of their own. So that was kind of the control, I guess, in terms of what I was using. Uh, just a couple things I noted while I was using it. So it has this interesting kind of locking mechanism. I have another Amika kind of leave-in product that has... It almost looks like a collar, like you can kind of take it off and take it on. But this is a spray, obviously. And it kind of twists and then falls down, which is nice. So you can kind of leave it on the product and then just lock it as needed. Uh, that was a nice feature. I'm not totally convinced about this type of spray because I think it's nicer when you're doing it on someone else's head. When you're using it on yourself, I think it's a little bit harder. But anyway, uh, I picked this up as well from Sephora when they were doing like a 50% off kind of hair event. So I used this and I used it on both sides. I think I might have used a tad bit much, but I figure it's probably better to have too much heat protectant than too little. So this says it's a silicone free lightweight primer that reduces frizz, and I do have kind of frizz prone hair, uh, protects against 450 degrees heat and detangles all hair types. Whether air dried or paired with heat styling, results are shiny and smooth strands. So anyway, that's what I used in terms of products. And um, by now I think you've had enough time. So I will say that <laughs> it's always hard in the, in the camera because I'm, you know, looking at a reflection. Uh, so this was the Amika side and this was the Dyson side. So um, I will tell you that honestly, and I'll go through some kind of pros and cons of each. I prefer the look of the Amika side for this kind of style. So, you know, both sides are straight, but there is a little bit more volume on the Dyson side. Uh, the Amika, and I should tell you, I guess, what this actually is. So it's a blow dryer and straightening brush. So unlike the Air Straight, which just uses air, like directional airflow to straighten, uh, this does have kind of a hot brush element to it, which I'll show you when I turn this on. So, you know, I think people, and this kind of gets into one of the pros of the Dyson in that I think Dyson specifically engineers their products to be gentler on the hair. Depending on your hair type and texture, you can maybe handle more or less heat. Um, this is a little bit more of a blunt instrument, I would say. And it's more expensive at full price than like the Revlon hot airbrush. I think the results with this are slightly sleeker. If it's ever half off again, I think it's kind of comparable to the Revlon. But yeah, I think I think this will end up doing more damage to your hair. So that, that's kind of one con of this Amika device. But yeah, just as far as like the finish and for the Dyson side, so I used Let's talk about this. So this is the um, attachment I use to straighten my hair for the most part. I think this is supposed to be more geared towards like frizz prone hair types. So they do also have a similar one. I think that is more for like fine hair. Uh, so I just used this side again because I do have more kind of frizz prone hair. And my hair was decently dry just from like towel drying. So. If it hadn't been, they do have the kind of air dry attachment. And I did use this kind of flyaway tamer on the Dyson side, although just looking at both sides of the crown of my head, I, I don't think one looks noticeably better than the other. Uh, but yeah, I did use this attachment a little bit just for that. Uh, but of course, as we know, uh, the Dyson, in addition to the blow dryer attachment and the two kind of straightening attachments. Uh, we also have like the round brush and the two like curling barrels. So I have the later model of the Dyson that you just kind of um, switch directions. So obviously this allows more um, flexibility in terms of how you style your hair. And if I were just to be using the Dyson to style my hair and I wanted it mostly straight, um, I would probably take like the round brush 
potentially or the bigger curl attachment just to kind of finish off the ends a little bit because like I said I do like how this is finished a little bit more. So yeah so I would probably you know kind of round it out a bit at the bottom just to give it a little bit more of a shape and I do have obviously layers in my hair as well so I would probably you know do a little bit more with this side so for me having these kind of curl attachments and this flyaway attachment and everything is kind of worth it to me to have the Dyson but you know assuming you were just interested in kind of a sleek style like the air straight would give you and you weren't too concerned about damage levels I think you can achieve a pretty similar result with the Amica. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the functionality of the Amica. So this is just one device. There's nothing else to it. So as you can tell, one of the kind of drawbacks um, for this device, um, it seemed like it did kind of pull a little bit on my hair. So there is that. Nothing terrible, but I did notice it a little bit. And with both sides, whether it was the Dyson or the Amica, um, I was trying to use my hands to kind of create tension as I was pulling the brush through, uh, which is, you know, one of the ways you can help to really smooth out hair is to have that kind of tension. Um, that's like how hairdressers do it with a round brush and blow drying it and everything. Uh, so yeah, this does pull a little bit. Another thing that's kind of a negative about this is um, and granted, I did this second after the Dyson, so there could be some fatigue there. And this this is the decapitated uh, Dyson, I guess. Uh, so this, the Dyson, I find a lot more comfortable and easy to hold in the hand. Uh, like the actual handle, if you can tell, is smaller. Uh, this is more of kind of an elliptical or oval shape, I guess. And... I think at the base anyway, it's more circular. Um, it does kind of taper towards the handle, but yeah, it's just a little bit bigger. So I did a quick comparison on my kitchen scale here, and you can see that the Dyson comes in at about one pound, one and five eighths of an ounce, and the Amica is just slightly heavier at one pound, two ounces. So if you have any kind of grip issues or arthritis or anything where you feel like it would be maybe less comfortable to hold a hair tool, that's something to consider. Uh, but yeah, this has, let's see, three functions. Uh, so if I turn it on to the first one, it, you know, to be honest, I didn't find the description on the Sephora website to be all that helpful. Um, but it says, let's see, the max temp is supposed to be 365 degrees. That's interesting. I don't think this is dual voltage. Neither is the Dyson. I think any type of airflow device, unlike a straight iron, is probably not going to be. So it says features here. Um, I'll just hold it up for a second. Double Agent, the smoothest operator in the game. Double Agent is a multitasking tool that combines a blow dryer with a thermal brush to create sleek styles with ease. There are three different settings to choose from, air, thermal brush, and a combination of both. Whether you just want a blow dry, straightened strands, or both, we got you. So it says three adjustable air slash thermal brush settings, ergonomical dial switch allows for seamless styling, Far infrared heat to lock in moisture and minimize thermal damage. Negative ion generator delivers shine and vanishes frizz. Again, max temp is 365. It says it has a nine foot swivel cord that won't tangle or trip you up. Uh, and I'll talk about that again in a second. It says US slash Canada, uh, 125 volts. EU slash UK, 220 to 240 volts. I don't know if that means that it's dual voltage or if it's just they made one one manual for both because obviously that's like a standard kind of us yeah so on here it says the voltage is 125 so i don't i don't think this is dual voltage 
So that would be a reason maybe just to get a hair straightener. Um, one thing, so it does have a swivel cord. One thing that's good about this compared to the Dyson, uh, and I'm creating, creating a fire hazard down here. <laughs> so this has a little Velcro loop on here that you can use to kind of keep the cord in check. Uh, but yeah, that is like the entirety of the, the cord apparatus, if you will. Uh, if you've had a Dyson, uh, you know that they have like this really annoying kind of almost computer charger type element kind of almost to the end of the cord. And then you have, this is the actual part that plugs in. So kind of annoying. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. This also kind of swivels and everything. So, uh, so there's that. So they say, what makes it special? A ceramic base and heated bristles emit maximum far infrared heat, which locks in moisture for hydrated and healthy looking hair. Flexible outer teeth deliver the grip necessary for an easy breezy blowout. So I guess they're talking about these. Those, those aren't flexible, but these are. The negative ion generator delivers superior frizz free and shiny results for the sleekest blowout of your dreams. So uh, I know, I think it's, is it Mirabu? Mil Milbu? <laughs> if you've seen any kind of hair videos on the internet, you've likely come across her. Milibu, I think. Yeah, she does a lot of comparisons. And I'm pretty sure she's done a comparison between the Dyson Air Straight and the Dyson Air Wrap um, with this type of brush attachment. Uh, and I think she said in one of her videos that the the ion generator on the Airstrike, which I guess is a feature you can turn off or turn on, uh, I think she said that that actually created more frizz for her, which I thought was interesting. Um, obviously, I can't I can't speak to that. Uh, so it says for directions, customize your blowout with three adjustable settings. Let's break down when to use. So to go from damp to dry, they say without heat use the air setting only. So that's kind of the first one here. And then it says to go from damp to dry and straight all in one go. The heated air and thermal brush combo delivers maximum uh, sleek results and it's not gonna stay focused, is it? Uh, and then finally, if you want to finish or touch up your blowout, use the thermal brush only setting. And then I think we have this lock unlock feature to kind of clean out the filter. So let's plug this bad boy in. Uh, so like they said, so they say the first setting is the air setting only. And I, the one thing about this is that it doesn't, there's a little bit of kind of a, you can feel it kind of click or lock into place, but it's, it's very kind of subtle. So I turn out the AC, so any noise you're kind of hearing is just the devices. So this is the first setting. You can see it still has, it's still hot. Like there's still heat coming out and there's still those red lights. So I'm not really sure like how that's working, I guess. Um, and I have this little infrared heat kind of gun thing. So I think I did one video like this once upon a time. So I'm getting about 112 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's going up a little bit now, 115. So anyway, so yeah, so that, that does actually feel like it's getting hot, uh, but you move it up a notch and you can hear the airflow is a lot higher. And let's see. So that's at like 150, 160, 170. It's getting a little uncomfortable to hold my hand here, to be honest. I feel like I'm in some kind of action movie. Like the temperature keeps going up. Something bad's gonna happen. And I'm just holding it kind of right in the middle. Okay, so I think that's getting to about 305 degrees. Um, and then if we move it all the way to the far end, this is where we have like the the Mordor kind of Eye of Sauron. Um, so this is just hot. There's no airflow or anything like that. So this is what you would want to use on dry hair. And I guess I'll just let it kind of sit for a minute and then I'll do the heat. Uh, but yeah, I didn't have just a hot brush like this. I know there are a lot of brands out there. So I kind of figured it was worth it 
to me to kind of play around with this because if nothing else I have it as a hot brush. So it's reading about, I just want to see if it gets up to 365 or, or if that's kind of the fail safe. It's at 342. Is this engaging and entertaining content? So I did have the air conditioning on when I was uh, actually drying my hair or whatever, styling it, but I have turned it off to film this portion. I feel like I'm getting a little, a little dewy. Getting close. All right, we'll go to 366. Okay. All right, so that's not to say that they're liars or anything. I'm not sure how how good this tool is or if I used it correctly. Oh, I think I actually started melting the plastic. Oh, that's good. Uh, but yeah, this was a thermo pen. Thermo works IR gun is what I was using. So yeah, so probably not something you want to do. It will melt plastic. Uh, and I will say that this does stay hot for quite a while. So that's something to be aware of. And obviously use your like heat protection mats and everything. Uh, and don't put it away right away. I'll let it cool off. So yeah, I can feel the warmth here. And I will note that as I was doing my hair, it also felt hotter as I was doing it. So as you probably know, having high heat can help with hair, but also can cause more damage and all that. So uh, it might just kind of like I can feel the heat here. Uh, so that's the kind of temperature rating, if you will. And I think I also have, or at least I did at one point, have a decibel meter on my phone, which is sometimes handy if you need to convince your husband that he was snoring. Um, so this is an app I got off the, um, what do you call it? Apple store. And let's see if I can do this somewhat scientifically. So I'm just kind of holding it up. So that, and when I'm talking, it's actually increasing it. So I think that's about 70 to 71. And if I move it up to the highest one, it's about 76. So really not, not too bad. Yeah, and the back is a little bit warm too. So I have to be careful how I, how I put this down. I'm just blowing crap around. All right, so maybe I need to give myself a little bit of a cool shot. make my hair bigger. Um, do you remember when Toddy used to do that? Okay, so uh, I guess just for the sake of being thorough, I'll put the attachment on. All right, so I think when I was doing this, by the way, I think I was using the highest heat and highest airflow um, to actually kind of straighten out my hair. Um, so let's just do, and this does allow you to kind of customize the combination that you want. So let's see what the, I guess, low airflow is. So that's about 74, that's about 78, and that's about 79. So um, yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, as we probably all know, um, Dyson does, I think, focus a little bit more on air versus heat in their hair tools. And then for the heat settings, you do have the option of just the cool setting. Hopefully I won't do any more damage to this thing. And because you don't have something that's actually heating up, it's just air. I don't know how accurate really this is. It's just, you know, my, my best attempt. So this is interesting. I think it's actually getting colder as I'm having it on. So this is about, it's down to like 61, 58, 59, 60. Okay, so we'll call it there. Let's see what the next one up is. And this is on the lower airflow. So you can see it's starting to kind of slow down a little bit. And I know Dyson has that kind of like adjusting feature, so I'm not sure. Let's say somewhere between 200 and 210. Uh, and then if we go up higher, all right, I think it's starting to go down a little bit again. So of course this kind of moves a little bit. All right, it was kind of sitting at 340 for a minute. Now it looks like it's going down. Okay, so, all right. So I think we'll, we'll call that experiment there. I, I think, you know, the Dyson does have that kind of more, you know, heat regulating feature. And I believe it doesn't get as hot as the Amiga, but uh, like I said, this is kind of your amateur science hour. So this is definitely warm, especially on the back. 
the, the front of it doesn't seem as warm. But the good thing about this also is that you can remove the head um, to kind of, I guess, and drop it on the floor, uh, is that you can, I guess, kind of dissipate the heat a little bit that way. Uh, and also with the Dyson, with the airflow, you have that like Kawanda effect. So as you are doing it, it does feel more like it's sucking the hair to it. Uh, the Amica doesn't really have that feature, but with both sides, like I said, I did kind of hold the ends of my hair and run it through to kind of get that tension that helps straighten everything out. Uh, so I think that's everything. So I kind of give you my thoughts as we went along, but I think my bottom line is I think the Dyson Airwrap is a great tool if you want to spend that much money on a hair tool. The good news is that it does allow you to create a lot of different styles using all the different attachments. The Amica, of course, is more limited that way, but assuming you just want to create kind of a smoothed, straight look, like you might get with the Dyson Air Straight, but you didn't want to spend another $500, I think the Amica is a very, very solid option. Like I said, I do like the way that the Amica looks a little bit better. You know, discounting all of the flexibility of the air wrap, I like the Amiga for this specific style. So there is the possibility of more heat damage with the Amiga. So you do want to make sure you go in with a good heat protectant. Yeah, I, I do think it's a very solid choice, especially if you can find it on a great sale like I did. And I think I will probably pull it out if I specifically want this kind of look and I want the kind of sleeker look that I get from the hot brush. Uh, because I don't think the Dyson quite does that. So I think that's my bottom line. If it's something that you were considering and you like the look, um, considering all of the kind of pros and cons that I laid out, I, I think it's definitely worth looking at. So I'll have everything linked for you down below. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.